So hi everyone and welcome to this video on economic applications of partial derivatives. So we discussed partial derivatives in class and it's one way to be able to get the derivative of a function with respect to more than one variable. So well, let's now proceed to uh, how these partial derivatives or how these concepts of partial derivatives apply in economics. And to, in particular, in this video, we're going to detail two examples, the first of which is on the concept of utility. Now, in economics, uh, you'll know that utility is some measure of happiness, right? So happiness. So ideally, you would want more and more utility so the consumer becomes happier and happier with more utility. And utility is some function of consumption, in particular, the consumption of certain goods. So say we have two goods here, x1 and x2. And we define some utility function, which is given as x1 raised to alpha uh, and x2 raised to 1 minus alpha, wherein alpha lies between 0 and 1. Okay, and one application of uh, partial derivatives is getting the marginal utility of each good. And we'll explain that in this video. And as well as getting or proving the phenomenon of diminishing marginal utility. So let's answer A. Okay, so A asks, what is the marginal utility of each good? So to get the marginal utility of good one, so we derive the utility function with respect to good one, and that's going to be equal to alpha x1, alpha minus 1, x2, 1 minus alpha. And this is going to be equal to the marginal utility of good one. Now, how do we explain that in in economic terms, well, this is the additional utility for uh, that. This is the additional utility that the consumer will get if good one increases by some factor. In this case, by a unit. Okay, so say I consume an additional unit of good one, my utility will increase by this much. Note, I said increase because. If I have positive quantities, say x1 and x2 are positive, which they should be, okay, this derivative sign, so x1 alpha minus 1, x2 1 minus alpha, is greater than 0 for all values of x1 and x2 greater than 0. So it's positive. And what you'll notice, it should be the same thing for uh, good 2. You should see that same increase. So if, with respect to good 2, you get a uh, 1 minus alpha, okay, x1 raised to alpha, x2, it's 1 minus alpha minus 1, so that's negative alpha. And this is your marginal utility of good 2. So this is the increase in utility for a change in good 2, holding good 1 constant. Okay, so what's the increase in my utility if I increase my consumption on good 2, holding my consumption on x1 constant? And you'll note that since, remember, alpha is between 0 and 1, this is something that's positive. This is positive. This is positive. So this entire value here is also some positive value for all values x1, x2, greater than 0. Okay, so that answers A. So that's the marginal utilities of good 1 and good 2. For letter B, we need to demonstrate the phenomena of uh, diminishing marginal utility. So... To do that, that's the second order partial derivative. And in particular, it's a second order direct partial derivative. So second order, uh, x1, x2, with respect to x1 squared. So using this, this derivative here, we're just going to derive this again with respect to x1. We're going to be left with alpha times alpha minus 1, x1. Alpha minus 1 minus 1, so that's alpha minus 2, x2. 1 minus alpha. And what you'll notice, you're going to get a term that's alpha squared minus alpha, x1 alpha minus 2, x2 1 minus alpha. And note that alpha squared is lower than alpha because um, uh, alpha lies between 0 and 1. So if you square a number that's between 0 and 1, that's something less than the original. So this entire term here is going to be negative for all values x1 and x2 greater than 0. Now, what does that mean? Okay, this is very crucial in economics, okay? So, say I had, uh, I had this axis for utility, and this is my consumption of x1, okay? 
my utility function, my total utility function looks something like this. Okay, now, for example, I consume one unit of good one initially. That would mean that my utility will be this value. That's again holding x to constant here. Okay, so this is x1, x2 is constant. Then if I increase to, go, to two units, okay, my utility will move to u2. So this one is the marginal utility that we have, right? That's, a different, that's the additional utility I get. But you'll notice something that as you increase, okay, more and more, okay, as you increase uh, more and more the consumption of uh, x1 or your good, the increase becomes smaller and smaller. So it proportionally becomes small. So from here, it was this much. From here, just this much, then smaller and smaller. It diminishes. So the increase in your utility diminishes as you consume more and more of x1. And you'll see the same thing for x2. So if we calculate that, x1, x2, with respect to x2 squared, we're going to be left with... Um, negative alpha times 1 minus alpha, x1 alpha, x2 negative alpha minus 1. Okay, and again, that is less than 0 for all values x1, x2 greater than 0 because we have a negative here, okay? And uh, uh, it's going to be approximately the same graph as we have here. So if we have u, x1, x2, now we're holding x1 constant, okay? Okay, then we have x2 here. Okay, so say we have one unit here, and this is our u1. And then when we have two units, okay, oops, sorry, sorry about that. Um, say we have two units now, two units, okay, so that's our increase this much. Then three units, that's our increase. Then we get to four units, and notice the increase is now quite a bit smaller. So again, the marginal utility is positive, i.e. utility increases when you consume more, but the increase is slowly decreasing as you increase your consumption of good too. So that's uh, an application on utility, but we can also apply it on the concept of production. So say we have a production function, which is um, this function, uh, a, k raised to alpha, L raised to beta, where alpha and beta lie between 0 and 1, okay, we can calculate for things called the marginal products of labor and capital. And uh, these marginal products measure the rate of change of the production, okay, because since it's a production function, with respect to the amount of capital or labor used holding the other input fixed. So let's calculate for that A. So the marginal product of, let's start with capital, is equal to the first order partial derivative of your production function with respect to k. So that's going to be equal to alpha k, uh, oops, uh, yeah, alpha a, yeah, k raised to alpha minus 1, l raised to beta. And again, that is greater than 0. Okay, that is greater than 0 for all values of k, l, greater than zero, since, of course, capital and labor are always positive. And you have, um, let's just get MPL, then let's explain. MPL is the first order partial derivative of q with respect to l. You get um, beta a k alpha l beta minus 1, which is, again, greater than zero for all values k and l greater than zero. So what do you notice? Both of these quantities, these derivatives are positive, which means that, for example, let's deal with marginal product of capital. If I increase capital holding labor constant, then production will increase, right? Since the contribution is positive. Same goes for marginal product of labor. If I increase labor holding capital constant, then production will also increase. And like utility, there's also diminish, a diminishing marginal concept here, which is called diminishing marginal productivity in labor and capital. So that's, uh, so proving uh, that, so we get a uh, partial, uh, second order partial with respect to K. And that you'll notice that that's gonna be alpha times alpha minus one, AK alpha minus two L beta. 
this is alpha squared minus alpha, a k alpha minus 2, l beta. And again, alpha squared minus alpha is something that's going to be negative. So this is less than 0 for our values k and l greater than 0. And let's just solve for the or prove that there's diminishing marginal productivity in labor. So that's second order with respect to Q, L squared. This is going to be equal to um, beta minus 1 times uh, beta A, K, alpha, L, beta minus 2. Then we're going to get uh, beta squared minus beta, A, K, alpha, L, beta minus 2, which is again less than 0 for all K, L greater than 0. And it's the same concept that we've had earlier. Okay, say this is my production function. Uh, then I ch I can change k, but I'll hold l constant. Then this is going to be um, uh, k. So same concept. If I increase, um, say I had one unit, this will be my production, q1. I have two units. Again, it will increase production to q2. I have three units. It will increase to q3. But the increase, k, okay, gets smaller and smaller as I increase k. And the same holds true, okay, the same holds true for L. So if I graph the function, okay, I hold k constant, have a graph there. Then I have this one, one unit, and then this is q1. Two units will register this increase to q2. If I go up to three units, the increase is now smaller than before to just that, and that's 3. So those are the economic applications of partial derivatives in which we discuss an example on utility and production and highlighted the concepts of marginal utility and diminishing marginal utility, as well as marginal products and diminishing marginal products. So thank you for your attention.